So as I got home yesterday, okay, start that over. I got home yesterday around like two o'clock, um, and I haven't put anything away, but I brought everything inside. I'm gonna unpack today, but I just woke up. It's like I woke up at nine thirty, around ten. Fell asleep at eleven, so it was so nice sleeping in my own bed. I'll say that. Um, but I I drink matcha because I can't handle coffee for my stomach. And I'm like, I literally just had enough, like a little less than I usually like to make for one cup in my last tin. And I was like searching through my boxes. I was like, well, maybe there's another tin in here. I'll check. And then I opened my cupboard to start putting stuff away. My mom, my mom put, she stocked me up with matcha. For when I got home, my legit reaction was, oh! <laughs> I'm so happy. Came okay, my morning matcha, it's gonna get me going. And then I pack everything, work out, grocery shop, clean, all, all the fun, all the fun things. Um, but yeah, uh, getting home, I, it was weird, it was like, when I pulled up to my building, I almost started crying. I just got like this rush of like sadness, like this journey is over kind of thing. Um, yeah, but then also like kind of relieved because I'm like, yes, I can just chill, stay at my place for a bit. Like I don't have to be driving anymore, which once I hit Kansas, I was like driving. I was just, I was done because it's all flat land. It's nothing exciting to look at. Um... Yes, I've already planned my next adventure, basically. Um, but right now, I just need to, like, work. Get some money so I can start traveling again. And it's winter, so it's, like, it's not a good travel time anyway. But it was weird. I, like, I've been in hot weather for, like, a week. Because I came from Wyoming, which was cold. But it's, like, a different kind of cold. And then I get here, and it's cold. And I go running. Because I... Because, like, okay, it's not, for Midwest, it's not cold. But for where I was, I literally just came from, like, 90 degree weather. And so, I'm like, I'm going to go running. And, because I have, like, I want to test my cardiovascular capacity since I've been hiking and being in high elevation and stuff. And, oh my god, I went so fast. <laughs> and I'm, like, lighter. I lost, like, 10 to 15 pounds. And so, I'm like... I'm feeling speedy and everything and I get two miles and I like I start like gassing out a little bit I'm like okay it's time to go home like I'm tired anyway like it was just a little workout um but I get back and my lungs are burning so bad just from the wet cold air and I haven't been around that in a very long time I still feel it in my chest like I was coughing like I met someone in my apartment building that's new, and I was just coughing, like, trying to hold it in, because I'm like, I swear I don't got COVID, like, I just ran outside, <laughs> and, oh boy, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to still run, like, keep up my running, so I can keep my cardiovascular capacity, because I don't want to lose it, I just spent two months working it up, and, like, feeling great, and everything, and, yeah, so, but running in cold weather is not fun. But I'm going to start lifting. I have a powerlifting competition and weightlifting competition that are super total coming up in January. So I have about two months to train for that. Um, not going in, like, expecting anything huge. Like, I just want to get in, have fun. I haven't done a full meet for powerlifting since um 2018 collegiate nationals i haven't done a weightlifting meet since 2017 and so it's just kind of like a fun meet to kind of see where i'm at right now just kind of dip my toe in the competition waters and kind of show my like it, there's a little bit of fear there because that's where i injured myself was my last full meet and so i've only been doing bench meet um and then I injured my back 
because I was doing it equipped and deadlifting, like equipped bench, deadlifting, and bench, and it was just too much volume and too much heavy weight um, on, on my back, and so I popped out some ribs. That took almost a full year to recover from, just because for three months, I didn't know I had ribs out of place, and they're out of place on both sides. I'm like, I can't breathe, but I don't know what's wrong, and so... Yeah. So it'll be exciting to do that. I want to, I'm really just excited to see where my bench is at because like it was getting up there before I left, but two months of not training, I did some band work here and there, but like I lost so much. I lost about two inches around my chest, um, and my lats. So obviously I don't have the same strength and I'm like 10 pounds, um, lighter, but I did get into the lighter weight class, so that's going to help me out. Um, going to Worlds, I was supposed to hit 250, but then stuff happened, and I basically bombed out. Well, not basically. I didn't bomb out. But I should have bombed out. Anyway, that's another story. Um, but 250 is what I would love to hit, not at this competition, but like, Hopefully, like, if I do this one and it goes well, maybe the next one or the one after that. But, um, it'd be cool to, like, if I can get 225, 10 pounds lighter. Actually, it'd be, like, 20 pounds lighter. Because I hit it when I weighed, like, 160. So, fingers crossed. We'll see. You know, everything's up in the air, so. Now I'm gonna drink my matcha and then mix with more matcha and then put my stuff away. Yeah. All right. See you guys later. What's up, YouTube? So today I am going to be doing a recap of my cross country road trip. So, sirens. We're back in the city. <laughs> So I was gone for two and a half months total. Um, I live in Indiana, so I started here. I drove down to uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. That's where my sister lives, and uh, she was going on vacation. So I stayed there for a week to watch her dog. And then it was off to Louisiana to visit a friend. But of course, I decided to go <laughs> when the, uh, Hurricane Laura was hitting. So I had to stop in Alabama and camp, wait for the hurricane to pass, and then drive down to New Orleans. Luckily, the um, hurricane had shifted and missed New Orleans, so it wasn't affected at all. But as I was driving down, I was like getting through real heavy rains because it was starting to shift up where I was. And yeah, that was interesting. I had to go over the New Orleans bridge when it was like insanely windy, and rainy and I have a tiny car I have a Honda Fit so it was like being blown everywhere and I was like oh no I don't want to be blown with the water it's kind of scary um, so after a couple days in New Orleans I went to Texas um, Austin Texas I have a couple friends down there so I stayed with them and visited them and so at this point on my road trip I had only camped once by myself which was like kind of scary because I camp a lot like I grew up camping um but I had never done it by myself and I did um dispersed camping so I was like all alone there was like a small group right next to me and then a small group on the other side but it was insanely muggy and hot and uncomfortable and then every little noise I'd hear I'd like wake up and be super alert and like someone gonna steal me like what's going on um so yeah, so I didn't feel too safe then and I didn't get a lot of sleep because it was hot and I just kept hearing noises. And so that first night was rough. But then I like was still around people for like the next week. Um, but then after Austin, I traveled to um, the sand dunes in Texas. And oh, yeah. Actually, what did I do? Where is it? 
Actually, yeah, so, and, okay, I went to the sand dunes in Texas, stopped there. I was planning on camping there, but because of COVID, they've changed their rule to where you have to book a reservation. You can't just show up, and I didn't know that, so I got there. No campsites were filled up, but because I hadn't reserved 24 hours in advance, I was not allowed to stay there. And there was no one, like, there tending anything. Like, it was really weird. And I was like, should I risk camping here and getting a ticket? And I was like, no, nah, it's not worth it. So then after that, I, like, stayed to watch the sunset. And then I drove to New Mexico and I got a hotel. And then the next morning, I went to Sitting Bull Falls, which is, like, my favorite spot that I traveled to. It was absolutely gorgeous. It was like a rainfall or a rainforest in the middle of the desert. It was so beautiful. And I was like alone for most of the time. And yeah, that was just like, I, I didn't, like, I found it just by chance, like Googling. Um, and so I was like, oh, okay, I'll go. Like, it didn't look that great online. And then I went and I was like, oh my God, this is absolutely gorgeous. And it's still one of my favorite places I visited during my whole trip. Um, and then after that, I traveled around New Mexico for a week because my friend was meeting me in Colorado um, after the week. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna tour around. But then there was so much to see in New Mexico that I honestly could have stayed there longer than a week. At first I was like, how am I gonna waste a week? Like, I'm gonna get so bored. But no, New Mexico was absolutely gorgeous. I did not expect it. Like, it was different landscapes. Like, every, like, hour or two. And I was like, what the heck is going on? Like, I never thought about going to New Mexico. And that was probably one of my favorite states I visited. So, after New Mexico, I did have a lot of trouble in New Mexico. Because when I was, that was when I was first camping on my own. And I was learning how camping with COVID was going on. So a lot of the campsites were closed down, but Google would say that they weren't closed down. So I would go in person and then I'd find out it was shut down. And then I would like be stuck somewhere. And so I would just get a hotel. So a lot of New Mexico, was, New Mexico was probably the most difficult to find places to sleep um, camping wise. So I did end up getting a lot of hotels in New Mexico, which sucked for my bank account. <laughs> but I mean, it was a learning experience. And after that, I like was able to find campsites and I did a lot better at it. So that was like my learning curve. I actually enjoyed, I was kind of nervous traveling alone, um, but I actually really enjoyed it. And then I met my friend in Colorado um, I got there a day early and I was going to do this really beautiful hike that I've seen people doing, um, but there was a severe snowstorm coming that day when I was supposed to hike and I was on a steep mountain and I was like, no, 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 I'm in a small car my car is not going to be able to handle the snow and I had to meet her in Denver that night because she was flying in. So I woke up super early and started driving to miss the snowstorm. It started snowing while I was on the mountain. And let me tell you, that was terrifying. It was blowing me everywhere. Like, luckily I wasn't on the roads when it was getting like slick because it was the first snowfall. So it was melting pretty fast, but the wind was horrendous. And you can barely see and you're going around these tight curves that like just have straight drop offs. I was just like, mm -mm, get me off this mountain, like, it's just so scary. But finally, I like, I made it to Denver, and I was like, thank the Lord. And we went out to the bars, and that was fun. And then we ended up, we were going to go to this one area unless she wanted to hike. But because of COVID, they started doing permits. So we had to change our plans like that, and I found another spot to go to. And that spot was like gorgeous. Colorado just all together is amazing. Like so many pretty mountains. And yeah, that was a fun time. Um, I spent a week or probably like three, four days with her. Dropped her back off in Denver to fly out. And then I traveled back down where it actually came from um, to do that hike that I had to leave early from. I was like, 
you know, I'm going into uh, Utah next. It's on the way. The other areas in Colorado, like, we're having fires anyway, so I had to go around it. Um, I went to the sand dunes sandboarded that was fun um and then that hike was probably one of the hardest and the prettiest hikes I've been on so I was definitely glad I went back around to hit it and it's so beautiful <laughs> it was like three miles up three miles down I think but it took me five hours to get up the mountain because it was straight incline at like 12,000 um oh, what's it called like feet in the air you know and but like coming down <laughs> it only took me two hours um so that was an all-day hike but highly recommend it was called ice blue ice lakes i think um and then after that i traveled to utah which i had never been to utah i had never been to new mexico colorado utah arizona california so all these states were like a new experience for me and like I would get in low points where I was like I don't want to do this anymore I'm tired I'm cranky but then I would go on a hike and my mood would immediately like boost up like you're seeing something new driving was exciting because you go through new landscapes and everything was just so gorgeous and then you meet people along the way hiking and they're so incredibly nice like Honestly, my faith in humanity was restored because of how nice these people were. And I made a lot of friends along the way. And you just, like, people at home think I'm, like, a shy, like, keep-to-myself person. And that I don't like talking to people. But it's because in the city, my social battery is so low that I just want to keep to myself. Because you have so much going on. And you just, like, my battery is just near empty all the time like high anxiety all that stuff but out there I had like I felt stress-free I felt anxiety free for the most part and so and I was alone most of the time so my social battery was filled up to the max and so I would be the one starting conversations with new people and I would post it like saying oh I met this person and this situation happened on my Instagram and my friends would reply like what you're talking to people like you're making friends that doesn't make sense and but it's like I'm a social person and like super friendly and outgoing if my social battery is filled up <laughs> um and then Utah I got to you know travel around there I didn't get into Zion because um again some parks that are really popular are very difficult with COVID going on they create bus systems or they create permits like Yosemite in California you had to get a permit in to the to get into the park and then the hike that I wanted to do you had to have a permit to go on the hike and so some of the really popular like beautiful parks are so difficult to like experience because of COVID um but in Utah I went to I got to go to Moab in the desert to see Arches National Forest and there I stayed all the campsites were filled up like to the max all the hotels were booked out they said that they were three times more busy than usual they think because covid going on um people are going on more road trips now instead of flying you know uh out of country and then um in arches like in the desert you want to go near october because then it starts getting cooler and you're not like dying I mean, it's still really freaking hot, so you're still kind of dying, but it's not as bad as if it would have been in the summer. Um, I got to go skydiving for the first time. That was absolutely amazing. I want to do it again. I want to learn how to do it by myself. It was one of my favorite experiences. That had been on my bucket list for a very, very long time. I had already gone bungee jumping, and like immediately after bungee jumping, I'm like, next need to go skydiving so that was so stinking cool I have a video and I posted it in um, one of my blog in the Moab vlog um, <laughs> jumping out of the plane people usually are scared and like petrified and then they like calm down once they're floating and are fine 
instant smile on my face right from hanging out the plane <laughs> and everyone's like you're crazy like what you are so different and I'm just like I loved every freaking second of it and I wasn't even scared like I thought that okay maybe I might have like some jitters like going on the plane like getting up there nope I was cute cool as cucumber the whole time <laughs> So Utah was gorgeous. A lot of the roads in Utah were dirt roads to get to like really good hikes, which sucked because my car could not handle that. So I had to skip out on some amazing hikes because my car just wouldn't make it down the road. Um, so I do plan on going back, but with like a Jeep or something, four wheel drive. Um, that's something you would definitely have to plan out if you do plan on road tripping to Utah, just cause like the dirt roads are so bad there. And then Arizona, I got to go to the Grand Canyon. That was amazing. Like, it is worth all the hype. It is better than the hype. Like, I was like, oh, okay, it's just going to be another mountain range look over. No, it is breathtaking. Like, people were doing, um, like, from rim to rim uh, hiking the, the whole Grand Canyon. And I almost legit like stayed there another night and did it like I that, that's a new goal of mine that I've like found I want to do the rim to rim hike of the Grand Canyon I think that would be the most satisfying challenging experience of my life like power lifting is tough but hiking 23 miles 14 of those being incline, 9 of those being downcline, and then the rest straight, like, whew, that'd be tough. Um, I also met some amazing people there that I actually got to meet up with again in Colorado because they lived there when I was driving back through to come back home. And then um, in Arizona, actually, and the Arches, so I was hiking, they... Arches was so freaking packed that they had opened it at 8 a.m., closed it at 8.30. I got there at 9. They had just opened it again. I got in, and then immediately after I got in, they closed it again. And so all the parking was taking up. So I parked at this, the only spot I could find a parking spot. And I asked the lady to go to the main spot that everyone wants to see. Can I get there from here, like, if I hike? And she goes, yes. She did not tell me how long that hike was. Who and hiking in the desert and in sand for, like, miles and miles. Oh, my goodness. That was hella tough. And then I'm, like, it was gorgeous, though. And, like, you know, I'm, like, taking it in. I'm going off the trail. I'm, like, living life. And then a gust of wind comes and blows dirt in my eye and it felt like a giant sand cranial just stuck in my eye and I did the thing that you're never supposed to do I rubbed it which made it even worse my eye was swollen I couldn't see it was watering I was crying my nose was running no one was around <laughs> and then I happened to pass these people and I'm like do you have any eye drops like help a sister out like my eye as water real bad they tried pouring water in my eye for me it didn't help um so i'm like one-eyed wobbling my way through this hike i'm about halfway at this point and i find the um campground that's in the park and i find a bathroom i'm like perfect i'm gonna wash my eye out like did not help but then i come out of the bathroom and I had talked to this couple earlier in the spot that I actually like got the sand in and then I went off trail and I, I saw them again and I go, do you happen to have any eye drops? And he goes, actually, I'm an eye doctor. And I was like, oh, someone's looking down on me, like the coincidence of that. <laughs> and then his wife had actually graduated the, from the college that I had graduated from. So he hooked me up with the good, good eye drops, like. Prime, and it actually helped a lot and then I kept on hiking after that he let me keep them um, and then the wind was starting to blow real bad again and so I had to like keep walking like this because my eye was getting so irritated from the wind 
And then after the hike, I am exhausted. My legs are blown up. I've barely eaten all day. And I have to hike along the road back to my car because I parked a far ways long. So I finally make it back to my car. I'm like done at this point, like over it. And I see a little note card on my car. I take it and it was the eye doctor. He found my car because this is, don't do this. I learned after this not to mention a lot of things about myself, but because I told him that I was in a little Honda Fit and then I told him what college I went to and what state I'm from. He was able to find my car out of thousands of cars, wrote a little note on it, giving me his phone number saying, if my eye doesn't get better, let him know, which was so sweet and amazing. And, um, but yeah, but after that, I was like, Ooh, maybe I should be more careful about what I tell people. <laughs> Cause I don't want them find my car and then like following me or something. You know, you gotta be careful. But it was interesting because every time I told someone I was traveling alone and for this long, they were amazed and like, I could never do it. That's so scary. Like, have you had any instances where like people attack you or something? And honestly, I had not had one instance that was like, you know, I felt threatened and not safe, except for in Vegas. But that was just because people you know but so yeah in uh, moving on to Arizona um after the Grand Canyons I traveled around I went a little bit I went to um Petrified Forest I found another little waterfall that was like hidden back on this um eight mile trail which was gorgeous it was like an underwater cave you could swim into which was so freaking cool um, and then after that, I went to Joshua Tree and I got to camp there. And oh my God, so beautiful. Like the sunset and the sunrise were absolutely gorgeous. Um, ooh, my oven's done. I'll be back in a second. Alrighty, I am back. Joshua Tree, okay. <laughs> Yeah, so Joshua Tree was absolutely amazing. Um, I set up, I backpacked in because that was the only way all the other campsites where you just drive up were booked. So I decided to do backpacking for the first time. I stuck my tent in there, some food, um, a blanket. I hiked out about a mile and a half, um, set up camp around this uh, underneath, like, at the bottom of this large rock <laughs> I hiked up and was watched the sunset and then I was gonna hike up all the way to the top in the morning to watch the sunrise but at night <laughs> I'm laying in my tent and of course there's like rattlesnakes out there well these group of guys so nice um, night climbers they're climbing the rocks at night I could hear them for a mile. They were so loud. <laughs> and then they decide to hike out to where I am and climb the rock that I'm camped right underneath. Um, they apparently didn't see me, but I could hear their whole conversation. Like the whole time kept me up. And then as they're coming down, I hear them mention <laughs> that they found a rattlesnake and almost stepped on it. And then they said so they found another one. So I was like, I'm not climbing that rock in the morning when it's dark. <laughs> I'm not about to get bitten by a snake when I'm by myself and don't have vent, like venom remover. So I woke up in the morning um, when it was still dark out, packed up everything, and then walked back and climbed up a different rock to watch the sunrise. So that was like, a really great experience and that was the first time I like backpacked to camp and I would 100% do it again um, and then after Joshua Tree I met a friend out in San Diego uh, he took me around for a couple of days and on the beaches in San Diego is gorgeous absolutely gorgeous and then after San Diego I traveled to uh, Venice Beach because I wanted to go to Muscle Beach but it wasn't what I was expecting. I didn't like it. 
do any people coming up to you and trying to sell you things. Um, not my scene. So I actually left earlier than what I had planned out staying there. And then I traveled up to Sequoia National Forest, which is absolutely freaking gorgeous. So majestic. You just feel like you're in another world. Like it is beautiful. Um, but there was a lot of smoke still from the California fires. So you could definitely feel it in your lungs. Like I didn't hike very much because I didn't want to risk like, you know, hindering my lungs from inhaling all that smoke. Um, but I did camp there and it was actually pretty buggy. So it was interesting. Um, wasn't a big fan of the campsite that I chose, but it was the only one available and it was right in the park. So that was nice. And then I traveled up to Lake Tahoe, which was so beautiful. Like there's only a few spots that I've like traveled to where it's like, I 100% want to live here. I would live there. It's got the mountains. It's got a gorgeous blue lake. I went kayaking in a windstorm. It felt like I was whitewater rafting and I was in an inflatable kayak. And I knew there was a severe windstorm the next day, but I was like, I'm only here for a day. I had already planned this, so I'm gonna freaking do it because I already told myself I was gonna do it. And that's why I came here to kayak. So that was an experience, but it, overall I was like happy I did it and it was fun. <laughs> Even though I was like paddling at one point, I couldn't move because the current was so strong and yeah, it was interesting. Um, after Lake Tahoe, at Lake Tahoe at the campsite, I went on the day that I kayaked, I had only my hammock strung up because like I was sleeping in my car. And then I would sit in my uh, hammock when I was back and someone freaking stole my hammock. I was so mad. Like who steals a hammock at a campsite? It's so rude, especially when you don't see a tent set up. I was mad. And then I called the front desk people to ask if someone turned it in. Cause I was like, well maybe someone thought that I had left and left a hammock. So they turned it in. Nope, no one had it there. And then. I think the guy at the front desk thought I was sleeping in my hammock, which I was when it was warm, but he, I don't think, he didn't know that I also had a bed in my car. Um, so he thought I was sleeping in my hammock that night and then it got stolen so I had nowhere to sleep. And so he was really nice and he actually gave me a free hotel room because he felt bad. Which honestly, $10 hammock that was extremely old, it had holes in it and kind of smelled for a hotel room. I'll take it, but I gotta buy a new hammock. <laughs> so after Lake Tahoe, I went to Yosemite and camped there for a night because I couldn't get in to the park because I didn't realize you had to have a permit. That one still makes me mad. Um, and then I went to Death Valley and went to the salt flats there and then I got to camp there and that was really nice, but it was really freaking hot. Even during the time I went, which was like October. Um, and then after that, I went to, where'd I go? Vegas. I went to Vegas. And if you watch my Vegas, um, Wyoming vlog, or I mentioned it in my Wyoming, Wyoming vlog, but Vegas was just way too overwhelming for me. Like, guys would come up to me on the street and like, ask me to spend the night with them. And I was just like not my scene I'm not a city person so I actually ended up getting very overwhelmed there and like felt extreme anxiety and I had not felt that for so long that oh it felt like a ton of bricks just like on my chest it was it was hard um, and then after Vegas I drove up to the salt flats in Utah and camped out on there and, oh, it was so pretty um, when I got there, I was still very, feeling very high, high anxiety from Vegas, but it started to go away after like camping out and there was no one really there. So ugh, what the heck just happened? No one really there. <laughs> so that was nice. 
Um, and then I met a friend out in Wyoming. She had already planned the trip, and I told her it was going to be around there. Um, already, so she invited me to come stay with her in her hotel room and go uh, hiking with her. And she's happy to have a hiking buddy. So um, that was a lot of fun. I love Wyoming. Wyoming is still my favorite state. And I still want to move there. <laughs> So in the future, um, hopefully I can move out to Wyoming. Um, my plan was to go to um, Oregon and Washington. I did end up passing through Idaho to get to Wyoming. So I got to go see a little bit of Idaho. Um, and then up to Montana and whatnot to hit all this. If I had done that, I would have only had four states left in all of the U.S. to see um, before I, I've hit all the states. But unfortunately because of the fires going on in Oregon and then it was getting um, really cold and Montana just had a huge <laughs> snowstorm and my brakes were actually giving out when I was in Wyoming. Like they were shaking going down the mountain and like I could feel it like not wanting to press down. I was like oh Sweet baby Jesus, please get me down this mountain. Um, so I decided just to go to Colorado, stay with a friend there, back in Denver, get my brakes changed, and then I made my way through Kansas, and then I stopped in Oklahoma, um, saw Turner Falls, which was really cool, and there's like a little castle there, which was interesting, and I explored that at night, so that was pretty fun. And then I went back to New Orleans to visit my friend again, and then I stopped back to see my sister, and then I got home after two and a half months, seven hundred dollars in car repairs, because um, I had to get a, I got an oil change right when I before I left, and then I had to get an oil change again because my oil was done. Um, I had to get my brakes changed, my rotors changed, and the whole nine yards, and now. Actually, this week my battery died, so I really put my car through the ringer. Um, I did over 15,000 miles, and yeah, so I like I had my low points, but 90% of the trip I was on a high. Like I loved every minute to get of it. I eventually want to get a van and travel around like for a year um next summer hopefully I can do um Canada road trip to Alaska so yeah I am I got back and I was like super sad because it just like felt like this a chapter was like over and I wasn't ready for it to be over but also I was at the same time and then I got freaking sick for two weeks after getting home. I was probably just like mentally and emotionally drained. And I put my body through a lot, like hiking eight to 10 miles a day. And so I'm finally feeling better. Um, but yeah, now it's back to reality for the winter time. And then hopefully in the summer I can travel again. But yeah, that was my recap. Um, I do have a blog that I'm going to be... I haven't updated it because I've been trying to get out the um, vlogs on YouTube. So I check out my blog. I will be posting um, kind of more what to see, where to go, um, more travel tips and stuff like that on my blog. So yeah, if you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe. And let me do let me know down in the comments if um, there's anything else you want me to talk about or um, kind of see content for me because I know I'm all over the place. I do travel videos and sometimes makeup or workout or clothing try on. So let me know down in the comments and I will see you in the next one.